Are we alone in the universe? Well, obviously not. There's the producer with this script. But is there life elsewhere in the universe? Well, that's a question that has plagued many scientific minds and the minds of most Stone students for eons. It's known as the Fermi Paradox, not to be confused with the Kermi Paradox, which is more about why a puppet frog would be attracted to a puppet pig. Physicist Enrico Fermi came up with his paradox in 1950. Reportedly, while eating lunch, potentially he was having a baked potato, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. But basically he asked, where is everybody? Fermi wondered, with so many stars hanging around above us and potentially with planets orbiting around those stars, why the things living on those planets haven't beamed down to say hey? New planets that could support life are being discovered all the time, many by Brian Cox alone. The Kepler Space Telescope recently discovered hundreds of new planets that could potentially support life and potentially have things living on them that look a bit like the things you see on Doctor Who. So if that's the case and the universe is practically bursting with prospective tourists, then why are we not overrun with little green men? Or great big green men? Or robot lobsters? Or blobs that communicate telepathically? Well, there are a few possible explanations. That's right, we assume that any alien race out there must be more smart, more tentacled and more technically advanced than we are. But actually, they might just be as rubbish or even more rubbish than us. This is sometimes called the algae versus alumni problem, or in a way that algae would understand, the universe could be filled with tons of life, but they're actually just weird chunks of matter hanging off rocks, failing to have thoughts, failing to build spaceships, and failing to invent weird novelty fish that sing, don't worry, be happy. It's already thought that there could be microbe-like life on Mars, or on the moons Europa, Enceladus, or Titan. The Martian ALH 84001 meteorite, which was found in Antarctica in 1996, had structures that looked like fossilized bacteria. But as every biologist knows, microbes and bacteria are no fun. Maybe one day these microbes will get their act together and evolve arms and power drills and thoughts and build something that's going to get them zapped to this planet. But this theory also proposes that by the time they do that, all that will be left is a few smouldering cockroaches and the top of the Statue of Liberty sticking out of the beach. There is a certain human arrogance that suggests that if there is intelligent life out there, it must be desperate to get to Earth and see our intelligent human feats, like reality TV and chocolate eggs. But the harsh reality is, maybe just like that episode of First Dates, where the lady walks into the bar, sees the man she's dating, then turns swiftly on her heel and sprints away, maybe these picky extraterrestrials have popped down, seen what we're offering and thought, no thanks. Or else due to the vast size of our universe, which is roughly 92 billion light years in diameter, over 13.82 billion years old, give or take a few months, and with over 100 billion stars in our galaxy alone, maybe they are out there colonizing, but they haven't come across us yet. This theory is also known as the Great Filter, proposed by futurist Robin Hansen, where intelligent civilizations, no matter how many beautiful robots and spaceships they invent, they inevitably end up destroying themselves. Oh yes, enter any pub during the daytime and sit next to the man at the bar with the weird eyebrows, and I guarantee you within 30 seconds he will tell you that aliens walk amongst us, and that the royal family are lizards, but Anyway, many, many people believe that UFOs exist and that the people in charge are not telling us about their interactions. Or alternatively, the aliens have been and gone. They came, they took some snapshots of the dinosaurs, they built some pyramids, threw together some stone circles, and then they bounced. We were just a brief, uninteresting stop on an intergalactic bus tour through the Orion arm of the Milky Way. Unfortunately, all these theories, notions, and paradoxes fall prey to one unavoidable fact, that science is no fun. Science demands that definitive, unquestionable proof be presented ideally by someone in a lab coat before they'll believe anything. We are alone in the universe, especially you.